Well, welcome back to Mr. Obsolete's Finished Homesteading. Today, it's going to be our third video on what we do on a vintage homestead. It's going to be video two on vintage change saws that we use. So the first one we did from the smallest saw up to 50 cc. And today, we're going to be doing from 50 cc to 60 cc mid-size saws, and those are the ones that we use the most. So we'll start off here with our little Pioneer P20. A Canadian saw, a 51.2 cc and a 14 inch bar. And weighs 12 pounds. These are uh, just a little general purpose homeowner saw. They made lots and lots of these and there's still a lot of them around. Very well built, quite reliable. Parts aren't readily available for them anymore, but I've used this one a lot. So anyway, I'll we'll get busy and show you some shots of it in action. Well, the next saw up is a Mac 1010 McCullough. It's an automatic, which means it has manual oiling and automatic both. This is an early version, and I don't use this saw too much. It's uh, like I say, it's 54 cc. It's in really nice, clean shape and stuff. And I use it more as a show saw than anything. But occasionally, I get it out and run it. And they made these from 1967 almost till the end of production in 1999 and a real popular saw very well built they're all metal and the thing is unusual about them is that between the early and the late models here that they uh, changed the starter from the different sides and on this one an early one the exhaust is down below here and on the later ones it comes out the side but the one thing about any of these saws is the 54 on up to 80 cc saw basically use the same chassis. Some of them have an all metal chassis like this one and some have a plastic and metal chassis combination we'll show here in just a bit. But anyway, we won't show you this in an action but you'll see it at the shows. And it weighs 11 pounds. Well, the next saw that we use a fair amount is a Homelight XL12. It's 54cc also. And these were made from 1964 to 1988. This saw was a game changer in the saw industry. Everybody except for McCullough copied it just about. And some of them even had an engineer they robbed away from Homelight and built a Lombard Lightning and it's about a 100% copy. Anyway, this one's got a 20 inch bar and uh, this one is just a standard model. It doesn't have automatic oiling, just manual oiling only. And when they, 1972 is when they started phasing in the red saws from the blue and white chassis on the earlier ones. And the only significant difference is this has electronic ignition and the earlier version had points ignition. Anyway, That one weighs 13 pounds, ready to go. Okay, well, we'll be taking it out and showing you some action on it here soon.
Okay, well the next saw is also a 54cc saw. This is a McCulloch Timber Bear. Uh, this is the start of the plastic saws. The saws we had before here are all metal. This one's got a plastic air cleaner, plastic gas cap and tank, plastic starter cover and plastic handle. The thing that's unusual about these, this is the very last saws that McCullough made in 1999. Down on the handle here it says assembled in Mexico. They had just built a brand new state-of-the-art plant right before they went broke. And they were taking all the parts and putting these together trying to save themselves and failed. Anyway, this saw and the basic same chassis like in the 610 and 650 are the saws I use more than any others and have for years. The first saw I ever bought was a McCullough 610 in 1980. Still on the bid, still out working its way through the trees. 24 inch bar. The thing that's kind of funny about this saw though, this has some safety sally features on it. It's got a little person's face here. It looks like an ape with earmuffs on. Looks kind of like an alien. And you can see it says timber bear. It's got a bear right here. And then right here, do's and don'ts like you know, don't try cutting concrete or sticking your hand on a running chain and you know stuff like that that nobody knows about. It's just dumb. <laughs> okay. This one weighs 20 and a half pounds. And I know there's those detractors out there that say, oh, those saws are too heavy, blah, blah, blah. Well, remember my motto, if you have to complain about the weight of these, that means you're a weenie. You need to toughen up because if you get used to using a heavy saw like this, if a miracle happens and someday you own a McCulloch SP-125, a real big giant saw, you'll be halfway there to being the tough guy. Well, our next saw is a 55cc, one whole cc bigger than the other couple we just looked at. This is a Swedish partner saw. I got this off Craigslist for 25 bucks and it's in excellent condition. It's really a nice saw for a homeowner saw stuff. It's one of the best I've ever had. It's a very powerful 3.4 horsepower. It's got a 20 inch bar on it, 3 inch standard pitch chain. Down here, the decal is pretty much gone, but it said semi professional. They made a professional version of it too, and it had a heavier duty clutch and had a hand brake on it, and a clutch brake, I should say, and things like that. But like I say, this thing is really nice, and all the decals pretty much are still on it. It's just a nice, handy sized saw, real smooth. And uh, comparing it to the Huskies and Stills I've had about the same era, this saw is definitely superior. It's better engineered, runs better too, more, and more powerful besides. It weighs 17 pounds, ready to go.
Sawzilla. Okay, our next saw here is a Home Light Super XL from 1964, 58cc. That's the first year they came out. And uh, this we picked up at a tractor show. A guy donated it to a guy and he didn't want it, so he gave it to me and had no compression and pulled it through. It sounded terrible. I just figured it was junk, but I was actually able to get it to run. And uh, there again, this chassis was the most copied chassis of all saws ever made. But the unique features of it, the exhaust system was just a straight stack. And the next year they came out with a spark arrestor muffler and they raised the horsepower on it. These early saws only run about six to 6,500 when they're cutting. So they're fairly slow, but you still do a lot of work with them. And this is probably the ugliest saw I've ever drug home. And so I did a couple of videos on this. You can go back and watch. And it's Super Ratzilla. And it weighs 17 pounds with a 20 inch bar. And so like I say, we did a couple of videos on this, so make sure you go back and watch them. Okay, well the last saw in this series is 60cc, it's a McCulloch Pro Max 610, this is a Montgomery Ward private label one, the only difference is it was painted in orange yellow instead of yellow, but um, this model of saw, the 600 series, was the largest selling single model of any chainsaw ever made by anybody and the Home Light XL was a close second, but there again it was a First of the plastic saws, and these things are just super durable. I've never had to do any major repairs on any of them. I've got about half a dozen of them. And just use them and use them and use them. This one's got a chain break on it. But anyway, it's just real easy to maintain and work on when you need, you need to do service on it. And the thing I like about them, they're powerful. So the power and the durability are the two things. I like more than anything on a saw. I mean, uh, the Huskies and Stills I've had that I bought in the mid late 80s to replace it, they all just wore out. And so I just keep using these and they never wear out. But they're a little heavy, but there again, you know, remember 19 and a half pounds. So remember, you're a weenie if you get a complaint.
we'll be doing another video here shortly and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing from 60cc on up and so stay tuned and remember to go back and watch our old videos and we'll see you in the next video remember vintage is best